This video will talk about the theory behind what is called a net ionic equation in chemistry. First, let's review when a chemical reaction happens in an aqueous solution in water. When these reactions happen, uh, concentration and temperature are factors that affect the reaction rate. The higher the concentration, the, uh, the faster the reaction will occur, and the higher the temperature, the faster the reaction will occur. So both concentration and temperature are what we call uh, directly related to the reaction rate. Now let's look at an example of a reaction that uh, here. We have aluminum solid reacting with copper chloride aqueous, which is in solution it means, yeah, to making copper solid and aluminum uh, chloride, which is an ionic, ionic compound. This equation here is balanced and does not show what the ionic state of the soluble compounds and what's called the non-ionic equation. This equation is the same as the ones that we've done in previous courses where we just write the equation with the reactants and products, we balance it, and we include their states of matter. If we look at this reaction in real life, we'll notice that the initial reactant is a blue solution with a, uh, a silverish uh, metal. The blue solution is the presence of the copper ion, and the silver metal is due to the presence of the uh, aluminum solid. When uh, these uh, ionic compounds right, are dissolved in water, they would dissociate into what in this case would be the copper, copper ion and the chloride ions. For our products, we will see eventually a colorless solution and a uh, pile of brown solid. The colorless solution will be the aluminum chloride ions, and then the brown solid will be the copper metals. Let's look at our non-ionic equation again and see what we can do to clarify the situation. As we mentioned before, the ionic compound copper chloride will split, dissociate, into its uh, ion constituents. So we're going to get here two chloride ions and one copper ions. So in our next step, when we write our what's called our total ion equation, we can write the copper ion as three copper two ions and six chloride ions. Why six? Because here in our non-ion equation, we have three moles of copper chloride but each mole of copper chloride has two uh, moles of chloride. So we're going to get here six moles of chloride ion. Similarly, on the product side, we see that we have uh, two moles of aluminum chloride. Each mole of aluminum chloride gives you one aluminum ion. So we have two aluminum ions here. And each mole of aluminum chloride has six chloride ions, sorry, three chloride ions and we have two moles of aluminum chloride. So we have here six moles of alum, uh, chloride ions. And you may be asking, well, what happened to the solid aluminum? Well, because it is solid aluminum, it does not dissociate. Therefore, when we write our total ionic equation, it stays as solid aluminum. Similarly, for the copper on the product side, because it's a solid copper metal, right? it does not dissociate, so we continue to write the copper uh, solid as Cu solid on the product side. So now we have our total ion equation where we have taken any soluble ionic compound and dissociated them into their uh, corresponding ions. If we look at our uh, total ion equation a little bit more closely, we see that we have chloride ions both on the reactant side and the product side. Therefore, we know that their chloride ion doesn't change from one side of the reaction to the other. They're what's called spectator ions because they, as spectators in a sports game, they sit there and they watch the action on the field. All right, so these chloride ions, they sit there and they watch the other chemicals get reacted into something different. Now, these spectator ions can be canceled out, just like uh, we do in math. If we see two terms on the same side of an equal sign, then we can cancel out. So, we can cancel the six chlorides on the product side, reactant side, and cancel out the six chlorides on the product side. After that, we're left with what is called our net ion equation. So, we see here that from our uh, total uh, ion equation, right, we have our aluminum, 
the aluminum remains. We have three copper ions. The three copper ion remains here. On the product side, we have our three copper solid. We have our three copper solid on the product side. And we have our two aluminum ions on the product side. And last, we also have our two aluminum ions on the product side. So we've canceled the spectator, spectator ions, leaving us with the net ionic equation. And now we have our net ionic equation. Two aluminum plus three copper two plus ions yields three copper solid and two aluminum uh, ions. You'll notice that the number of atoms are balanced. We have two aluminums on the left, two aluminums on the right, three, alum three coppers on the left, three coppers on the right. What you ought to also notice is the charge is also balanced here. And balancing charges will be more important as we continue on in our chemistry uh, learning career. Here we have three sets of two uh, two plus ions, so then the total charge on the reactant side is six positive, and on the uh, reactant product side, we have two sets of three plus ions, so on the product side, it's six plus charge as well. So we have six plus charge on the left, six plus charge on the right, so then our charges are balanced as well. And as we mentioned before, our um, aluminum solid, which was uh, gray or silverish has disappeared, leaving us with a brown copper metal on the uh, product. So that is the theory for our net ion equation. In our next video, we'll do some examples.